concerning him that have so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together in my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to, to, to deliver such a one unto Satan, for the destruction of flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Read verse 7. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed. Sometimes when you want to <clears throat> make room for new things, you got to get rid of old things. Come on, Alan. I feel the virtue. Uh -huh. And sometimes when you want to change your behavior or your way of doing things because whatever you're doing is not working for you, then you have to get rid of the old way, the old frame of thought. Now, I, I read the scripture because in the Corinthian church, there was a young man who uh, laid down with his father's wife, and I'm not emphasizing fornication at this time, but notice what it said. And instead of the church rising up and saying, listen, we don't do that. Uh -huh. They let the man stay. And and, 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 and and nobody said anything. And Paul was saying, listen, you cannot allow people to come around you and do what they want to do. He said, you just can't allow people to do anything in the name of Jesus. And you represent God. They come into your home or they come into your presence. And they carry themselves any kind of way. And you don't say anything about it. Uh -huh. He says, listen, you're puffed up. He said, you shouldn't be puffed up. You shouldn't allow this thing to go on and keep on. You got a lot of church folk that, praise God, are corner minded. They don't want to abide by the word of God. They don't want to abide by God's holiness. So they want to come in here, not realizing the Holy Ghost told them to tell you, go to you that think you're slick. You're playing with your very soul. Jesus. Now, God spoke that to me. You see, he sees everything. He sees what you're hiding. He knows what you're trying to do. You think you can make a mockery out of the Holy Ghost? Hear the word of the Lord. Your days are numbered in Christ. Because you're playing with him. And the Holy Ghost told me to tell you, he doesn't play. Amen. On the smallest of matter, you don't try to outslip God. Because Paul said, listen, I'm going to tell you what you do. When you get together and my spirit with you, he said, you give this man flesh over to the devil. In other words, let him go. Give him over to what he's doing. You keep on messing around and doing the wrong thing and you say you say God will give you over to that thing. That's what he's saying. Give him over to it. Step out the way. Remove the hedge and, and let him have his way. Now hopefully in going through the hard places he may learn or they may learn to repent and preventure get saved for real. Deliver such a one uh, to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, the spirit might be saved. He said, now your glory is not good. You don't want a glory in doing wrong. You don't want a glory in people that do wrong. Don't you know that a little leaven leaven the whole lump, you put a little yeast in a cake and bread and it rises. You, you have to learn to start, amen, cleansing your own heart. You might say, well, this is just a little problem, but that little problem will grow until it becomes a big problem. You may say this is just a little habit, but that little habit will become stronger and stronger until you can't break it. Come on now. Paul was trying to teach them, uh, using that as an example, is that when you see something is not right, just don't let it sit there, even in your own life. But ask God to give you the strength to get it out. That you may be all that you can be. He said this, purge out therefore the old leaven. That you may be a new love. Purge out that old attitude that you may obtain a new one. 
purge out that old behavior that has not benefited you or anybody around you. Purge out that frame of thought. Purge out that sin that does easily beset you. Whatever you know that is not right in you, purge it. Get it out before it takes you over. And if it has taken you over, God is here to pluck up that follow ground. I feel the virtue. I said the Holy Ghost has come to help you purge yourself. Help you be purged by his spirit that you may become a new lump. This is why so many times for year after year you make a promise or you say you're going to do something and then next year you find yourself in the same place, in the same situation. Why is that? Because Jesus said you can't put new wine in old bags. You can't do new things with old way of thinking. You can't stand up and say, I'm going to change my life, but you've gotten, you have not gotten rid of the old ways or the bad habits or the way, the old way of thinking that has caused you to stay in the same old place. When you find yourself in the same old place, going through the same old thing, and evidently something you're doing is wrong, and you need to be purged. I feel the virtue. And some people are afraid of purging because you're afraid of change. Amen. A lot of you, you say, well, if you... If you feel like you're not in control, then, then you don't feel safe. But listen, you've been in control all this time and you still ain't got no way. Your life still is not where it should be. Understand what I'm saying. Amen. So in you, in, in you closing God out and trying to take things into your own hand, you hinder and hurt your own self. And then all of a sudden I feel the virtue. You wake up one morning and you say, Lord, this is as far as I've gotten. I'm talking about in personal living. Uh -huh. Lord, I, I, I've been saying to myself, I'm going to change. I'm going to do this. And I'm still doing the same old thing. And before you know it, two, three, four years have gone by. And you realize you're in the same old spiritual place and condition. You have to be purged, people. Winter, spring, summer, and fall. There's a reason for it. In the summertime, everything is blooming. In the springtime, it begins to bloom. In the summertime, it comes out beautiful. In the fall, it's leaves time. Everything is falling off the tree. In the winter, everything is bare because that cold air is what? Purging. It's cleansing the earth. And it looks like you've lost it all. Oh, but when that springtime comes around again, it grows right back more and stronger. That's right. You have to be willing to let things go in order to obtain some things. Yes. And sometimes you have to be willing to let people go in order to obtain some things. Get somewhere in your life. You have to be willing to let your personal uh, way of thinking, well, this is the way I've always been. Well, that's why you're where you always are. Excuse my box. Because that's the way you've always been. But it hasn't gotten you anywhere in your personal being. I'm not talking about prosperity or anything like that. I'm talking about the most important thing in life, and that's your soul. Your character. You. Purge. Lord, cleanse me. If there's anything that's not right, get it out of me. I feel a virtue. You'd be surprised how life could take a turn and you don't have to go anywhere. But it can take a whole new turn for you simply by being purged from the way you think, the things you do, by changing things that have not been edifying for you. And planting new seed. Purge out therefore the old leaven that you may have a new lump. Get rid of all the old ways that have not benefited you. Is anybody hearing me? Amen. And that's not easy. Yeah. That's not easy. Disciplining yourself is not easy. How many times, and myself included, how many times have we said we're going to exercise and lose so much weight and, we'll, and we find out that that's very difficult. <laughs> that's right. That, that, that's as simple as it is, it's difficult to exercise every day, you get rid of that weight, and do what you say you're going to do. You may start for a moment, then you drop off. Uh -huh. You get up in the morning, you got time, or for some reason you just can't get out of that bed and do it. You get up and do everything else but that. Uh -huh. 
you find out that discipline doesn't come easy. That's right. Come on. Because you have to break through a lot of barriers. Yeah. You almost find in almost every motivational speaker, almost all of them have a testimony to encourage the congregation or the people they're talking to as to how they lost weight. Almost all of them do. How they lost weight. And the people just applaud because everybody knows it's not so easily done as it is said. Amen. But when you learn to take control of your own will, you stripping yourself in so many other areas. You obtain endurance, temperance, patience. Purge me, Lord. Purge me, Lord. Don't think that you're so smart you can do it by yourself. I feel the virtue. But could it be that something in you is not right? And I'm not necessarily saying, hey, you're a big sinner. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about anything that can hinder you from being all you can be in life in Christ. I'm talking, listen, how many people live and you're not satisfied with yourself? You smile, you laugh, but when you go home and look at yourself in the mirror, you don't even want to. Some people don't even want to see pictures of themselves. Because they're not satisfied with themselves. They have inferior complex. You have sometimes some of the most beautiful people think they're ugly. And they really think they're ugly. And you look at them and say, oh, you're beautiful, you're handsome. But they don't think so. Which shows you something else. When I used to preach on the streets and I dealt with a lot of young people, we'd pick them up and keep them for the summer in mother would. We'd clean them up, take them to church. They grow up beautifully. They go home for the school year, come back, we had to go through the same process again. Get the street out of them. You know, clean them up, go to church, have a good time, go home, come back. And I learned the greatest influence is the home, That's right. whether it be good or bad. It really takes something to break that influence. Huh? And the greatest influence upon an individual is that individual themselves. If you don't change that which is within, you can change scenery, you can change this, you can change jobs, you can change friends, and you're going to come up with the same old problem. Because nobody can influence you greater than you. Because that's who you are. But now, because that's who you are doesn't mean that's the way you have to stay. If who you are is not edifying, if who you are is not edifying to those around you, if who you are is not edifying to you, God created me a clean heart. Jesus. Renew my spirit. Jesus. Help me to be someone that's breathing to you. Help me to look at myself and say by the grace of God, I'm satisfied with what the Lord has done in me. Now I can walk with the pure conscience with confidence because I know that there's no unclean thing in me because Lord, I put myself on the altar and I said, praise me. When I said this, I meant it. Said what, preacher? When I said, taking a good look at myself and I really got fed up, my back against the wall, when I said to myself, enough is enough. I did something about it. Oh, you're not going to do anything about yourself until you get sick and tired of yourself being the way you are if it's not right. Jesus! That's right. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You need to be perfect. Thank you, Jesus. God come to clean you up. He come to help you. I said he come to give you strength. I feel a presence. Life is too short. I've been volunteering at a community home in Buckhead, I think, over 15 years now. And I'm in my early 60s. I feel like I'm getting up there. <laughs> But when I walk into that place, they call me a baby. I ain't mad at them. They say, oh, you're just a baby. 
They ain't mad at them. They 89, 100, 90. Which lets me know that at 60, it ain't too late to change what needs to be changed. Ah, you understand what I'm saying? Ah, it ain't too late to change what needs to be changed. Because life doesn't stop with retirement. We have to make sure we're right because he's coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle. Lord, life doesn't stop with retirement. But life stops when he calls your name. And you've got to be right. With God. Jesus. I feel the virtue. Well, Bishop, when, when can I get this help? Now? You can get it now. God will touch you now. Is it all in Moses? No, he can touch you now. I pray for you. He can touch you now. It's in your heart. He said he stands at the door and knock. He said that if you let him in, he'll come in. And eat with you. Have dinner with you. Fellowship with you. What do you need him to do? If you need a healing, just say, I need a healing. Other than that, if you come for prayer, I'm going to pray that God purge you. And purging is not for people that are bad. Purging is for everyone Amen. that wants to go forward Amen. in life Amen. and in Christ. Amen. Purging is for everyone that knows they need a makeover somewhere. I need a purging. God purge me. Listen, purging is the process of life. You see what I'm saying? And the reason why some of you haven't gotten any stronger in Christ is because you sidestepped the purging. You're sidestepping. You didn't want to go through the process of change and self-discipline, but my God, when you let God touch and change you, they learn in Christ Jesus that they're repent and trust Him, they're new creatures. Old things have passed away and all things have become. Well, Bishop, I've done some things. Every time I think about them, I, you know, it bothers me. They have a law in this land. We got some lawyers, people up here. You can't try a man twice for the same crime. If, if, if the court says you're innocent and you were guilty, they can't try you again. They, they can't try a man for the same crime. Now, if the law of man says you cannot be tried twice, and you say, well, I've been through some things. Well, the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all sin. Yes. And when you repent and God forgives you, you understand what I'm saying? You can't try a man twice. You've been set free. You can let that thing go and learn from it. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Jesus healed a man. He said, he said, be, he said be healed. He said, go and sin no more. Learn from it. Don't allow the things you've gone through to hold you down. Once God has forgiven you, you're free from it. You're free from it. Let nobody judge you in it. Because he has purged you and set you free. What do you do? You show yourself one who appreciates what God has done. Tomorrow's not promised to any man. I feel the virtue. The Lord can't touch you when you're saying, let my will be done and my will be done. That's not how he operates. You want to trust in God, you have to let your will go. Let his will be done and he will help you to manage your will and put it in the right direction. But you got to be willing to let it go. Paul said, <clears throat> you're puffed up. He said, get rid of the evil deed. That's what I'm saying today. Get rid of whatever is not right for you. 
whatever habit, whatever frame of thinking, whatever way, get rid of it. Ask God to take it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give a little hand up off. You know, if it hadn't been for God, what would you do? You all have to, you have to agree to that. You have to agree that it's only by God's grace that we are all here. And if you've been feeling bad about yourself, there's no, there, there no stones being thrown here. I don't want you to feel bad about yourself. Because God can cleanse and He can strengthen us. We all have sin and have fallen short. As a matter of fact, take time out and, 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 and think about what God has done for you thus far. Realize that if it had not been for Him, things would have been worse than what they were. Oh my God. But you know what? Because He loved us. And he gave us grace. He can help us. He can strengthen us. And this message is not for somebody that's bad. This message is for whoever wants yes. to continue to go forward. Jesus. Whoever wants to be all they can be in Christ Jesus. and in life. Whoever wants to be prosperous and be in good health as a soul prosperous. Yes. This message is for those who are tired of going through whatever it is they've been going through and it's just not working. Sometimes they don't even know if they're going to get up the next morning or night, or even if they want to live. This message is for all you, my God, that want to be all you can be in Christ Jesus and be ready to meet the Lord when He comes. This ain't got nothing to do with being bad or good. It is about your desire to be what God wants you to be and to be all you can be as a fellow man in Christ Jesus. My God, being able to walk in love, you got a right to love, you got a right to be loved. Oh, you got a right to be respected. You got a right to be treated right. You got a right to a man to live. And what I'm trying to tell you is be encouraged. This message is to help you be encouraged and realize what I'm trying to say is that your life is worth something. However old and however young, don't play with it. Don't play with it. Your life is the most precious thing you got. And God, oh my God, so many people didn't wake up today. So many people didn't make it. But you're still here, so they can't receive this message of encouragement. But you can. And today, the Bible says you hear his voice. Harden not your heart. Today is the day of salvation. Look where the Lord He has brought Look where the Lord He has brought you Nobody can tell somebody else that that problem is not a big problem Everybody's problem is a problem to them. Everybody's situation is a situation to them. So then everybody has their own thoughts. Look where the Lord. Everybody has to go through their own way. He brought me through the storm. Whoa. And he brought you through all of your rain. Why don't you just be honest? Humble yourself. Look why. Take a little look. Well, the Lord, He has brought you. Well, look why the Lord, He has brought you.